Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. So in this example, we're going to rearrange this formula to make y the subject. Now, before we start looking at this, I'm just going to show you an example using numbers to show you something that you can't do when you start to, uh, to do this question. So let's just look at uh, this simple example. So to start with, we're just going to write down the square root of 25, which of course is 5. And then I'm going to write down the square root of 25 in a different way. I'm going to say, well, we could write the square root of 25 by, we could just replace the 25 by two numbers that add up to 25. So we could write it as the square root of 16 plus 9. Okay. So that's fine, nothing wrong with that. And now I'm just going to have a look at what the square root of 16 plus the square root of 9 is equal to. So the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 9 is 3. So if we add those two together, we get 7. So what I've shown here is that the square root of 16 plus 9 is not equal to the square root of 16 plus the square root of 9 because of course we know that 5 is not equal to 7. So the relevance of that to this question is that we cannot say in the same sort of way, so let's just have a look what we've got in the question, we want to isolate the y but what we cannot do is to say that the right hand side is the same as the square root of y plus the square root of 8. So that's something we can't do. Okay, so we know what we can't do, so now let's have a look at what we can do. I think it would be a good idea to swap the sides because we want the y on the left hand side as we want to make it the, the subject. So let's just write down to start with the square root of y plus 8 is equal to 2 times x plus 5. So if two things are equal, it doesn't matter which way round we write them. So we know we can't separate out the square root. We can't write this as root y plus root 8. But what we can do is we can square both sides. So if we square the left hand side, we get y plus 8. And if we square the right hand side, let's just write it down in a big square bracket to make it absolutely clear what we're doing. So we're squaring both sides. So what we get on the right hand side is 2 squared is 4 and then we're going to be squaring x plus 5. So that's going to be 4 and then x plus 5 all squared will be x squared 2 lots of uh, 5x so that will be 10x and 5 times 5 25. And then we could multiply out the right hand side. It's not actually necessary but let's multiply it out anyway, it will probably make it easier to think about. So we've got 4x squared plus 40x plus 100. And then we can take 8 away from both sides. So y is 4x squared plus 40x plus 92. And then if you want to, you can factorise that. And you can see why I said you didn't actually have to multiply out the bracket because you could have left it in factorised form because we because it happens to be the case that 8 is a multiple of 4 it, it would have been easy to uh, not multiply out to, to start with. So you can see we've still got the x squared and the 10x here and then all we would have had to do have done late, earlier on where we've got the 25 is subtract 2 from it because 2 fours are 8 and we can see here that uh, 92 divided by 4 is 23 so whichever way around you do it this is probably the neatest way of writing the answer so we've made y the subject and if you want to you could check your answer um, what would be a good value to check well, I would say what we do is if you have a look at the, uh, the original formula where we've got the square root of y plus 8, we want the y plus 8 to be a square number that would make life 
nice and easy. And how about making the y plus 8 add up to 25? So then we've got 25 minus 8, so, so y would be 17. So what you might like to do is put 17 into the original formula for y, work out what, uh, what x would be, then put that value of x into our answer and see if y turns out to be 17. And if it does, there's a good chance that the answer's right. Let me know what you get for x.